What's going on guys, Billy here, and the Mavic 3 Enterprise was released almost 10 months ago, back in September of 2022. This combined the Mavic 3 airframe with some awesome new features and upgrades that made this a more well-suited drone for someone that was doing commercial work. With this drone, access to the SDK was made available, so a platform like Drone Deploy was able to build their software to be compatible with this drone. This proved to be a perfect match because the Mavic 3 Enterprise was built with mapping in mind. I covered these topics in my original mapping video, which I'll leave linked in the top corner and down in the description, but the Mavic 3 Enterprise really is the ultimate mapping drone for a lot of different reasons. The first and probably most important is the mechanical shutter, so as the drone is flying, capturing photos, there won't be any distortion or warping in the photos from the movement of the camera and drone, like you'd get from an electronic shutter, which is found in a lot of drones nowadays. This will ensure more accurate maps and overall better images. The camera itself also produces some of the best aerial images, making the quality of the map that much better. From there, basically every aspect of the Mavic 3 Enterprise offers offers an excellent mapping experience. There's an RTK module that you can use for more accurate positioning. The flight time of over 40 minutes means that you can stay in the air for longer, completing larger missions more efficiently. The upgraded obstacle avoidance gives you peace of mind knowing that when the drone is flying by itself, it's constantly looking out for obstacles around it. Support with the RC Pro makes loading missions and general usage super easy as the built-in screen alleviates the need to set up your phone or tablet for flying, and the portable form factor makes it easy to fit everything you need inside of a small case or even a backpack. Here's the thing though, when drone deploy support was initially launched for the Mavic 3 Enterprise, it only supported mission planning for standard maps. So this was making 2D ortho mosaic maps or 3D models. This means that when you'd go into the drone deploy app on your RC Pro, the Mavic 3 Enterprise would only be able to fly the typical strafing or crosshatch pattern missions, which was fine by me because this is primarily what I use this software for with the stockpile measurements that I do. Knowing that people use this platform for so much more than just making 2D ortho mosaic maps and 3D models, drone deploy has finally brought over all the other typical flight modes that they offer. This means that you can fly the drone manually through the drone deploy app directly. You can make those standard maps and models like we've always been able to. You can create a vertical facade model. You can also use the corridor mapping option for long tight distances. This would be helpful if you're say trying to map a long stretch of roadway. They also have other media capture options available like the panorama shooting mode, the ability to capture a video and create a photo report all completely autonomously so you don't have to actually fly the drone each time you want to capture this data. So now that we have the full suite of flight modes available here through Drone Deploy for the Mavic 3 Enterprise, we can now completely document and capture any project that we want to. So if you're in the construction industry, the mining industry, the agriculture industry, the road construction industry, it doesn't matter. This drone is ready to completely digitize your workspace so that you can then have a digital twin, a digital asset that you can share with anybody that has a vested interest in the project that you're working on. So if you remember in that video uploaded back in 2022, I took the Mavic 3 Enterprise out to map a construction site where a cluster of abandoned buildings were being demolished. The current status of the project at that time was post-demo, so all the buildings had been brought down, the land was leveled out, and all the scrap material had been separated into piles. Fast forward to today in August of 2023, and not much progress has been made. Some equipment is still here, and most of the material has been hauled out, but some of the machinery and piles are still here with a lot of overgrowth throughout the site. This right here is like the definition of construction at a state facility. Facility. If you're in the industry, you definitely know what I mean. Anyway, coming back here with this new version of Drone Deploy, my goal was to capture the entire site using the full suite of flight modes. So I wanted to map the area, grab some panoramas, take a video orbiting the area, and grab some photos looking down at the site from different angles around the project. The first task on my list was to create the 2D ortho mosaic map. What's nice is that my saved flight plan from the last time that I came out here was already in here, so all I had to do was turn the drone on, open the Drone Deploy app, find my project, and then press go. From here, the Mavic 3 Enterprise turned through the entire site capturing photos that I'll then upload when I get back to my office to create a digital twin of the grounds. I went a little overkill here as I actually have the enhanced 3D feature turned on, which you wouldn't need to make that 2D map. But for the sake of demonstration, I wanted to get a nice set of photos to really build out the 3D model of the machinery on the ground, the stockpiles, and the buildings that are sitting here towards the southeastern portion of the grounds. Having enhanced 3D turned on will add a flight pattern in the opposite direction. This is called crosshatch. It'll pitch the camera angle down to negative 65 degrees and fly around the perimeter to make an overall better model for you. These parameters are all customizable to your liking before flying, so you can tweak your missions depending on your needs. Once your mission finishes up, the drone spins around and flies back to your home point, landing right where you took off from, so this entire process is entirely automated, making things very easy. 
Now I want to point something out really quickly that specifically pertains to the Mavic 3 Enterprise here. When you're making a map or a model with this drone, as it flies through its predetermined route, this drone flies so fast. Like I want to put this mission back up on the screen here, but I want to play it at regular speed. So this is not sped up at all. Look at how fast the triangle is showing the drone's position on the screen is moving. It's zipping through at 20 miles an hour. And even if you look down at the preview in the bottom left corner, you can get a sense for just how fast this drone is moving. I took a crappy video from my iPhone as the drone moved across the sky and tried to get the trees in the frame to give you a point of reference to see just how fast the drone was moving while I was trying to make this map. If you've used any previous Mavic drones with drone deploy, you know that they fly fairly slow to compensate for the electronic shutter because you don't want any motion blur or any sort of warping in the image. But the fact that we've now got a mechanical shutter on the Mavic 3 Enterprise and the fact that it's so efficient brings me back to why this is one of the best mapping drones that you can purchase. Like, yes, it's small, portable, compact, easy to bring with you, but it is so efficient. I mean, that was a fairly large construction site that I mapped. And remember, I was very thorough doing a crosshatch as well as a perimeter around the entire site, leaving me with around 650 photos all captured in 17 minutes and on one battery. Now, really quickly, I want to give you a peek at this map after it's been processed within Drone Deploy. I have the ability to manipulate the space, zoom in, and get a full look at what the site looked like from the exact time that it was captured. I can also flip over to the 3D model and get a rough look at the stockpiles, machines, and structures on site. The Mavic 3's camera is just so good, too. Like, the quality, resolution, and color of this map and model looks so good. The 20 megapixel 4 3rd sensor really gives you some of the best results that I've seen from any drone that I've made maps with. Now remember, we were back at the site in September of 2022, so I can quickly switch back to that older map and cycle through both of them to see the changes made. You'll notice a big difference between these maps because there was such a big overlap in time between capturing them, but if I say went out here every week, I could quickly jump from date to date and see how this project evolved over time. I could track machinery on site, what material was moved, I could even use drone deploy built-in tools to see how the grade of the site has changed using the elevation tool if one of the objectives of the project was to flatten the land or maybe even build certain areas up. I could even take measurements of the piles of material on the site to evaluate how much inventory I have, what I might need more of, and if I was selling some of it, what I could quote that material at for sale. Just the map alone is going to be a great asset for any project manager to track the progress of their job from a single top-down view. However frequently you want to do it, you can see what it looked like over the course of time that really is going to be a great tool to make use of but remember we now have access to all the other automated data and media capture options available here in the Mavic 3 Enterprise. So to add a new flight plan from our project we just press the blue button icon and choose what we want. Running down the list the first thing we have is panorama which is definitely the most straightforward. You just drag the icon to where you want the panorama to be captured, select your drone's altitude at that spot and then press go. From there the drone will take off, make its way to the point and then capture a series of photos that'll be stitched together right through drone deploy site after the fact. So you upload all of those photos into drone deploy and it processes that panorama. When you go to view this on the site, it will appear right in the position that you captured it on the map view. You can select the panorama and spin around the image to view the site as if you were actually standing right there. These are definitely better captured from lower altitudes so that you can get a better understanding of what's on the ground. So I'd recommend taking multiple panos around your site instead of trying to take one at a really high altitude. Next up on our available media capture option, is video. You can fully customize your flight plan by moving the points the drone will fly to around on the screen. And for the sake of this video, I'll have the drone make an orbit around the site that we're capturing. To further customize how the camera is looking, you can adjust the green point on the flight plan map. So this is where the camera will be looking at for the duration of the flight. For my sake, the best spot to put it is going to be right in the middle of the site. Within your setup, you can also choose the height of your drone's flight, the pitch of the camera, the speed of the drone, and what resolution you want the video to be captured in either 1080p or 4k. Once all of this has been set, like the other flight modes, you just press start flight and the drone will handle everything for you. It takes off, flies to the start point, it then makes its way around the route while capturing the entire video for you, starting and stopping the recording. Now I will say that the video is a little bit hard to dial in, particularly because you have to set the points with your fingers on the screen rather than flying the route manually and setting the points that way. The gimbal also moves in a weird way throughout some of the points, but overall this is a great bit of data that you can 
use for capturing the progress of a construction site like this one. This video, of course, can be viewed right within Drone Deploy's website, and you can cycle between different days and different clips to get a view from all the different dates and angles that you captured video from. And now for our final form of media capture, photo report. The setup for this is just like the video, so you add points and drag them around as you see fit, while the green center mark is the spot that the camera will stay focused on, so make sure that it is set accordingly. The rest of the settings are similar to what the video capture option gives you, but you don't need as many parameters because we're just snapping photos and not capturing a whole video. This means that you can change the drone's altitude and the camera's focal point, meaning the pitch of the camera. Just like all the other flight modes, everything is fully automated from here, so the drone takes off, flies to the first point, and snaps photos, moving from spot to spot, continuing to capture those photos as you've set within the mission. Once it's finished, it'll come back, land, and you're all set to upload your data, which is easily viewable right within Drone Deploy's website and your project folder. Okay, so now we've built up to the point where on this specific site, we can now capture all of the different forms of data. We have all of these different missions set up. So we can create a 2D map, we can create a 3D model, we can capture panoramas, a photo report, and a video report. And this now brings us to one of the most powerful features introduced within Drone Deploy, and that is the ability to queue different missions. So because we have all of these missions already planned, I can turn on the drone, select this project, and then as I go to start one of my missions, I can queue all the other missions to be completed right behind it within this project. So I can have the drone start by capturing all the photos around the site and make that photo report. Then I can add all the panoramas I want the drone to capture, then have it take the video around the entire site, and then I can have it finish off with the map of the entire site. Once the drone takes off, it'll rip through all the queued missions by itself, going from start point to start point. I probably could have set this up in a more efficient way, like letting the drone do the video after capturing the photos because it's already up at that altitude, but doing it this way actually revealed a pretty neat safety feature. Whenever the drone is descending, it'll give you a little orange warning on the right side of the screen so that you can see the drone is lowering its altitude and can quickly pause and intervene if you think it might run into an obstacle. Remember though, the omnidirectional obstacle avoidance system on the Mavic 3 is so good, so it'll be able to catch any obstacle that you might come across and make its own adjustments like stopping mid-flight. Now, queuing all these different missions one after the other obviously wouldn't be able to finish on just one battery because there's a lot of ground to cover, but once the battery gets low, it'll automatically come back to you for a new one, and once you make that swap and put in a new battery, it'll return back to its position and pick up right where it left off. Okay, so now that we have all of this data, the photos from the map, the photos from the photo report, the photos that make up all the different panoramas that we captured, and even the video of the entire site, what do we do with all of this data? How do we manage it? Well, luckily, Drone Deploy's new universal upload feature makes life so much easier when it comes to data management and uploading all of the stuff that you capture. Like if I were to have to go through this folder filled with all the files that I captured from this flight and manually separate them, sure I could do it, but there is a mess of over 700 files here ranging from photos to videos and they all make up different types of flights like the panoramas, the video, the map, and the photo report. Like this is why Universal Upload is such a great feature. We can take just about everything we captured from our SD card or hard drive, drag it into this uploader, and it'll do all the heavy lifting for us. You'll see that it separated everything out into the photo report, the three panoramas, the video, and the map that we captured, and there's even a map on the right side here to show where everything was captured from. This is a lot of data to upload though, so you want to make sure you have a pretty strong Wi-Fi connection with a fast upload speed. So think about this. Now that we've taken the time to plan all of these missions, everything that we do now at the site is completely automated, from the photos to the videos to the panoramas and even the map. Everything can be done with basically the push of a button. We've got to show up, set up the drone, queue up our missions, let the drone fly, change batters if we need to, and then upload everything for viewing. So now everything that we do from start to finish is more or less completely automated, making life so much easier. I know that we briefly looked through some of the data that we already captured, but just to take a final peek at all of the images that were captured from that flight in one spot, the map view is essentially our default view where we can see absolutely everything from the photos that were captured to the video clips to the panos and of course the actual map itself. Everything is right here at our fingertips and perfectly logged so that no matter who came to look at this and no matter when that was, they would understand how to read it and how to interact with it. Everything here is available in the highest quality and loads super fast, which is really important when you're trying to document a project. You wouldn't want to have to deal with low resolution images that lack detail that might cause you to miss important information. I'm going to leave a link below to this project so that you guys can check it out and poke around on the map to see how one might interact with all of the different assets. This again is a great way to completely document your site from start to finish for tracking progress and milestones. Now to close this video off, I've got to mention that although being able to repeatedly fly
fly these missions autonomously makes life way easier, like way, way easier. I will have to say that in certain regards, you will get better results from flying manually. To give you an idea, here's a job that I completed for a construction company that is putting up this warehouse. I've got photos ranging from far shots showing the whole site and the surrounding area, medium shots that showcase the entire work area, and closer shots highlighting some of the details. These photos have been captured in a raw format, fully edited, and again, this flight was done manually by myself, so when I go back here, I'll have to fly it manually again. Compare those to the photos that I captured autonomously with drone deploy. They definitely work, but the framing is a bit off for my liking, showing a little bit too much of the sky and I think that the drone was positioned a little bit too far away. This is the same for the video. It just didn't feel as precise as something that I would have been able to put together manually. With that said, I think that the proper workflow in this regard, now that all the flight modes are made available here on the Mavic 3 Enterprise, is to set up your map autonomously, set up a photo and video route autonomously. If you want to set up some panoramas, you can do that. I'm not a huge fan of the whole 360 thing, but you can do that if you wish. And then from there, take some time after all the automated stuff finishes to capture some photos and videos manually all by yourself. You can get closer, you can do things with a little bit more finesse, and overall, I think you're going to appreciate those other photos that you capture after the fact to be able to document the progress of your construction site, your farm, whatever you might be using Drone Deploy for. So, I'm super happy that now Drone Deploy is finally complete for the Mavic 3 Enterprise, making this drone even more powerful than it already was. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on Drone Deploy and the Mavic 3 Enterprise in the comments below, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.